Hello campers. Um, I'm making this uh, video for Gabby and I'm also making this video for Sandra. Uh, Sandra um, uh, checks in on my YouTube channel all the time and gets all my videos. I have to put this video on YouTube because I don't know any other way of taking a long video and sending it in the email. There's probably a way I just don't know it. So I put it on e they put it on uh, YouTube, my YouTube channel, and it takes and breaks it down, puts it into a link so I can send it in a text message or anything like that. That's why I do it. But Sandra always listens, so we might as well include her. Uh, Gabby, uh, I'm, um, I met you and I never really knew you. Uh, you're a really guarded person. Um, you're uh, really into your working out. I felt that your working out um, um, overshadowed anything. I never would date anybody that's really into the gym again because they're a gym and their body and that's their identity are more important than um, a person. Um, I don't feel you ever loved me. I feel that uh, um, you're a confused person. One thing is you talk about women all the time. I said the other day that, uh, you know, boy, we had this lesbian girl and her, her daughter, her, uh, her wife showed up and you go, oh, she'd like me. You're always making references about, about uh, um, women and how they like you and and all that kind of stuff so i think you're bisexual um that's okay uh as kirk Bain said everybody's gay everybody i went out with uh or i wouldn't go out with but i had a lot of gay friends i did pride festivals all over i had a friend bruce kennedy so i was kind of introduced uh, kind of let into that that community and there's a lot of guys that secretly have affairs with other guys there's a lot of women that secretly have affairs with a lot of women women are more i thought women are more prone to it because slumber parties and they let you know sleeping together you don't see any guys ever sleeping together that's just weird but girls do that and i love you you know friends and and all that so that's that's kind of natural and i think that's in um a lot of women um i don't think it's in sandra i think she's a full-blown fucking heterosexual i've never seen any references towards any other women or anything but um i don't look down on you upon that but i i kind of wish that you um in your life uh you would um uh, you would have come you would have trusted me enough to uh, to come forward with it. And that's a, something that you really people can't um, say. It's too it's too deep. It's too family members, and it's too um, even though the way we grew up, it's too uh, um, taboo or something like that. But it's really not that big a deal. I mean, if you have those things, anyway. So I wouldn't go out to anybody from the gym. Um, I tried my best. I really did uh, care about you. Um, and I really felt that uh, um, you have uh, a lot of issues, maybe from your divorce, maybe from your uh, childhood, maybe from your dad. Um, you're really, really, really self-centered. Uh, you're really uh, into yourself. Um, I, I think that uh, you're a really flirty person. You get uh, your jollies. I think you were married. And when people are married and they want to get their jollies, they have little flirts with other people. You said to me one time, you said, boy, I have a lot of guys uh, really, you know, chasing me around and everything. You don't get guys chasing you around if you talk to them like you're not in, like you're not interested, you're not available. You only get people chasing you around and calling you if you act like you're interested, if you have, uh, you know, a rapport with them that is kind of cert flirty and sexy and then they kind of move forward so um i don't trust you i, I never have um when uh you know the first time that uh we were outside and the cox cable guy come up and boy you let out a, a laugh with that guy that was the biggest laugh i ever heard you were really enjoying that guy's conversation you know and so uh, i don't trust you as far as as a person as far as uh, flirting, I don't believe you. I think that you've had a lot of relationships in in your uh, while you were married. I, I that's what I think. That's what I assess out of this. Um, so I think that uh, um, that um, I I don't I don't really know what your deal was with me. Um, I think you got a divorce and somebody that interests you. Maybe I think you found out thought I was attractive. Um, I took you out everywhere. Um, I think it was just something to do. Uh, I think you're real. Uh, I think, you know, I, I should have known when, uh, 
when um, I looked on your mirror and you had a 30 year old picture of some fiance that you used to go out with that you really loved and I found out you got pictures of that guy um, still saved and uh, and so let's let's just break this down a little bit you, you had a fiance and he died and, and you, you cared about him but when somebody dies you never get a chance to see how it would have worked because um, you know, you live with them for a little bit, everything's fine, you're in the honeymoon phase, and then they die. You know, it could have been just like your husband. Uh, you, you, you didn't end up liking him. Could have been just like me. You didn't end up liking him. So you keep him in a little box where he was in his nice little pretty uh, sweater and his his 20 year old uh, look and and that 20 year old look. Uh, and so my point is that the fact that you hold it on to that means you really never moved on. You didn't let anybody into your life because when you find somebody else, you forget about that old person. Like for example. I was infatuated with you uh, tremendously, uh, probably because I couldn't quite attain you. That was a the thing there. You couldn't quite attain that guy. He died, so you never really, you never really got to be with him. So there's always that yearning, okay? And so, but my point is, when I, when I move on and I meet somebody, then the Gabby Koenig uh, is no longer going to be important to me. She's just going to be a girl I used to know, okay? And so the fact that that guy is still somebody, that means you haven't found anybody else that you loved more than replace. You told me that you loved me more than you lo ever loved anybody in your life, okay? So then I, sh I should be evidently on that, uh, that on that wall someday. Some guy walks in, he goes, who's this? This is my kid, this is my kid, this is my kid. No fucking pictures of your fucking ex-husband in the fucking house, okay? Okay? But there's a picture of a 30-year-old picture of some guy that used to be your fiancé. That's a whole bunch of things that you got to unpack there. But that's an unsettled person. So, um, okay, so where are we going from here? We're going to uh, um, uh, every, we're going to, we're going, well, let's talk about Santa for a second. Hi, Sandra, because I know you're watching this. Um um, Sandra is the nicest, sweetest person in the world. She actually still has a relationship. She doesn't like her ex-husband. Uh, her kids over there, uh, she's not going out with somebody and her kids and her kids and they're having some function over there. She goes over. She, she and I am not, I was never jealous of that. Uh, she is a person that is true blue. She's a really nice person. She's worked in retail all her life. She's really good at it. And, uh, she is nice. She's nice to talk to. She is fun. She's creative uh, she makes you feel loved okay the re I didn't uh, somehow it wasn't there the connection I apologize so since we're talking about Sandra I treated you like crap you are a wonderful person I think you need to get away from me because I'm kind of like a Gabby there's some reason that it's never gonna happen with me um, you know when uh, probably probably like uh, like Gabby's ex right now so it's like when you lose somebody even though so I, I got done with Sandra and then I was going out with Gabby so Sandra wasn't important and Gabby was important but then when 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 so then when Sandra said dude I you know I've been trying to be with you I've been trying to be with you I you know every time you break up with Gabby I talk to you and I think maybe that we're gonna be together because I really truly love you and that and that that really is special that someone loves somebody so much but that's the same thing that's going on with her, the, the Gabby's ex, okay? So, because she, uh, she talks to him all the time, and he's, uh, she's relate, relate, relate to me that, well, he wants to get back together. He thought, well, you know what? When you can't have, when you have somebody, you don't want to be with them. That dude actually came to her and said, hey, uh, we need a separation. So he came to her and said he didn't want to live with her anymore, okay? And uh, he had a girlfriend at the time, supposedly, I don't know. But, uh, and another thing, let's talk about Gabby for a second here. I, I said to her the other day, I said, you know what? Uh, who was in charge of the race? Who ran the relationship? Who, who was in charge of that relationship? And she said, I was. I ran the fucking show. So then I said to her, oh, okay. So if somebody runs a show, like a CEO of Sears, CEO of uh, Blockbuster, CEO of uh, any company um, that went down the tubes um, and, and went into, um, and closed, who's to blame? 
the leader of it, the CEO, the person that ran the company. Well, Gabby, you ran that relationship, and you know what? You ran it right into the ground. Uh, money was more important to you. Your gym was more important to you. Whatever was more important to you, the relationship, you were in charge of the relationship, and the relationship ended. So we're not putting you in charge of a relationship anymore, but you can't step aside. You say, I know that I, I crashed and burned this relationship because relationships aren't important to you. At least you haven't found one that is. Okay, so if I had to uh, take the two people from what I from what I knew, and um, and uh, I would say, okay, there's a girl like uh, Gabby, and there's a girl like uh, Sandra. Uh, who do you want to go out with? Definitely go out with Sandra. Sandra is true blue. She's nice. Uh, Sandra has a. Uh, well, let's go back and forth. Let's just go back and forth here. So, um, uh, I don't know where we're going from here, but, um, so, um, let's see, what if we could put this on pause? Okay, we're back. Okay, so, um, uh, my, my thing with uh, Gabby, let's go back to Gabby, we're driving down the bike path, um, and I said something about reincarnation, I want to come back as a dog, because a dog seems to be have a pretty good life, and uh, no, 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 you can't come back as a dog. Well, what do you mean you can't come, well, I, I, I researched it, and everybody knows that, uh, that nobody really knows. You can write a book, you can do all the studying you want, but was there really a God? Nobody knows. There's nobody alive that can verify that. Nobody alive that can verify it. There's just as much evidence against it as it is. But if somebody wants to write a book and say they did a bunch of research and get somebody to, to buy it, um, that's more power to them. But, but you really don't know. And anybody anybody that tells me that they know whether there's a heaven or not, you, can't, you believe that they believe. Like my cousin Phil, I said, she's seen a... Gabby said she seen a flying saucer above her house when she was 12 years old. And I said, what do you think, Phil? And he said, I believe she believes it, but I don't believe it. And uh, so I don't believe that anybody knows about reincarnation. And even if I, even if that, the point is, even if I, even if you're right on both those cases, people have to agree to disagree. That's, that's the first part about you, Gabby, that uh, is a problem. Um, you think your way is is the highway you think you're always right and, and and who knows if you're not but the point is isn't it if you're always right it's if you have an a point you have a point of view this is what i think i've done some research on it and here's what i think and here's what i think i've done some research on it because i've i've had 40 years of experience too uh in reading things and seeing things and i believe that you don't there is no proof and so i choose not to i choose not to i choose to, to not to not believe it Okay, I choose that there's an unknown there. And then two people go, okay, well, that's your opinion, that's your opinion. Sometimes the people take the other person's opinion if they can persuade them, but you have to be nice. You got so mad, you didn't talk to me for a day. Okay, so then but let's go back to the, the, the problem, one of the problems with you. Um, so you, I brought some, uh, I, you're eating no carbs and so once in a while I eat carbs I got some chips and I got some M&Ms and I got some sweets and I got some a thing of water well I couldn't put the water in the pantry because it's, I thought it was too too big too cumbersome and so then I didn't want you to see the chips so I put them out in a metal filing cabinet in the garage and you seen that and you freaked out they do not go in there they do not go in there and it's almost like who does that if uh so Every time you had a problem, you acted like I was your kid and you had told me 27 times not to do that. It's almost like you told me to make your bed 27 times and clean my room and I just didn't do it. And you had had it and you were gonna let me go with all barrels. I told you that chips don't go in the garage. Who thinks they go in the garage? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And so I'm like, why are you, okay, why are you getting so pissed about that? Just like the other day, uh, I lived a year, I, I moved, I, I, I um, really fucked up when I met you and trusted you because I um, let go of the house I had and um, all my possessions because I was so sure that I was going to, to be with you and that didn't turn out, so I lost all of those things. Um, Sandra was a person that really cared about me and a true friend. Um, and uh, she, she no longer talks to me now.
because I kept going back and forth and I kept um, saying, well, it's over with Gabby. You want to go to a movie? You, gotta, you want to do something? Um, and so she, uh, because she loved me, had ideas of going, getting back together. And, and, and I fucked her over so much in that respect that I no longer have a friend there. So, but um, you, all the little things, um, you have, all the little things you made such a huge deal about. I said one time that uh, that chess is about intelligence, and when when um, no one knows what to do, that's just going on your sheer intelligence and your sheer um, scrambling. You know, if I don't, if I've ever done something before, that means I don't know the secrets of it. I'm not skilled of it, and I don't know the way. So I'm only going on my natural. Ability, my natural ability. If I've never done anything before, I'm only going to my natural ability. Usually my natural ability was better than other people's because I was stronger and I was faster. And I, I thought about it while I thought how to, how to make it win. An example is when I was in fifth grade, fifth grade, okay, that's just four grades over from fucking kindergarten, you know? And, uh, and, I, and I wanted to win the President's Award. And so I said, hmm, how do I win the President's Award? I think Tony Reese is stronger than me. He's a bigger kid than me. And I think he could beat me. So, but, so my best shot is to be behind him. That way I know what I'm going for. I know what I have to beat. Otherwise I get up there and I go, oh, you had to put your chin above a bar and hold it there. Okay. And so I got to the last line. I knew what I had to beat. 61 seconds was the best one. And that was Tony Reese. Okay. 61 seconds. That's a long time to hang with your chin above the bar. If you don't know, a minute's a long time. If you don't believe me, try to hold your breath for a minute. Try doing anything for a minute. Anyway, so I got up there and I had the teacher read it off. I said, uh, read off my time. Why are you want me to read off your time? Because I want to know what I got to be. Okay. So I, and, uh, and I got to the point where I was at 40 seconds and my whole body started shaking. It started shaking so bad that my feet were tapping the wall. <sighs> I wasn't going to let go because I was going to beat him. My feet are tapping the wall. I'm holding out 49, 50, 51, 50, 60, 61, 62. And I dropped. I won. Figured out how to win, okay? I wasn't the best guy there, but I wanted to win and I did. So anyway, um, I figure out ways to win. That's like chess. You may not believe me, but when I was 12 years old, I got a chess board, okay? I looked at the instructions and maybe I played a game with my sister, so I learned how the moves have have, have, have gone. I never ever had played chess since I was 12 years old. And so I showed you the moves. You beat me the first time. I don't know how to play chess. It's just barely intelligence. But I told you that, you know what? Chess is just no more than we know. It's just barely it's your, it's your only uh, it's just natural ability. So I, it only goes to if you're trying to to do something you've never done, natural ability, intelligence, you got up. That was a long way of saying you got up and it threw a big fit. You always throw big fits over really nothing. And here's the thing. Uh, most people, if they get mad, um, they get over it. They, they calm down. Then you, you throw a big fit. Um, you kick me out. Um, you uh, don't talk to me. And I'm thinking like, I said that it was about intelligence and now I'm not talking to her on the phone. Uh, she won't let me in her house. And that's somebody that doesn't like you. And But every time I went back and forth, I said, why, why don't you, I mean, it, you're treating me like really somebody that, somebody that doesn't like me. Um, why, oh, it's 18 minutes, why are we still together? And I never understood why we were still together when you treated me like that. Um, I walked into the hospital every day. Do you want me to go to the hospital or not? Do you want me to go to the hospital or not? If you don't want me to go to the hospital, then tell me you don't go and I don't go there. You may not be comfortable. Yes, I want you to go to the hospital. So the ride there was, wasn't was happy. Um, you acted like you didn't want me to go. You made me feel at the hospital. This is what I felt like. And I've been in this situation before with different girlfriends. I I had a girlfriend, but I was in a situation where um, uh, I, mean, I really, really didn't like him. So I went to the hospital and you made me feel like I was cramping your style. If I was in the hospital in your situation and I had a nurse that came in every day and I kind of liked her and we kind of had a little, uh, little little flirt session every time she came in, I kind of know it, well, she liked me and I kind of know, but that's how far it went. We flirted with each other. That's what people do. And, you know, some guy walks in, he goes, hey, beautiful. That means he likes you. And he's, and he's so it depends on how you respond to it. Hey, how you doing? You still know yourself. Well, you're in good shape. Blah, blah, blah. And so that's the situation. I always felt like there was one or two or three people at the hospital that that was 
was your situation? And when I was there, they they were kind of like, oh, I can't flirt with her today. There's her boyfriend. Who's that? Um, and so uh, you made me feel like that. Every time I walked into the hospital, you didn't greet me. You didn't say hi. You didn't say thanks for coming. You didn't talk to me at all. And you said, I'm so busy right now. Well, you weren't so busy. No one's buying that. Everybody has time to greet somebody. You weren't the nurse there. You were a stander by. You wanted to do everything the nurses want to do. Um, you know, and so um, I knew uh, right back, we're going to take, we're going to go to Mayo Clinic. Um, the way you treated people there, uh, because it was terrible, uh, and you got kicked out of the Mayo Clinic, they came to you and said, hey, you know what, they, like you said, hey, you know what, we think that with the way you're running things, you're not letting us be the doctors, you're not letting us be the nurses, you know, uh, well, you can't give them another radiation, there's downstream, you know, what? and you, you always were trying to bully people around, if you didn't get your way, you're throwing a fit, well, they didn't take it, they said, hey, you know what, there's the door, and you can leave. You said, "Wait a minute, I have to get, uh, I have to get uh, chemo for my kid." Well, they had the chemo the next day. It was going to be a week. They wanted you out of there. Okay, it's so the next thing. Um, I'm sitting there, and somebody comes to the door and says, "Hey, we need to give Zach something. You can't come in. You can't come in." Nope, he just got to sleep. My kid's just got to sleep. He hasn't slept in here. And you act like you kind of know what you're doing. But this is a doctor. This is the hospital. You're not in charge. But you always kind of think that you're right in this way. And you didn't let him in. Another person comes there and says, hey, you know, uh, we need to give him this. He just got to sleep and you're not coming in here. And so next thing you know, security comes. Okay, so you just got kicked out of Mayo Clinic. Yeah, that's pretty hard to get kicked out of a fucking hospital. And then, then you get security called on you for from uh, from and they and you you kind of justified. It, but you said, "Well, I didn't know that he had to have that, or I would have let him in." The point is that you handle it shitty. Anybody would have said, "What's it for?" He's trying to sleep right now, and they would have said, yeah, "We need to give it to him. We know he's sleeping. This is a hospital. This is our business. This is all we do." But we're saying we have to come in at our own hospital and perform this procedure for him. We're not really asking for your permission, lady. We're just, we have to do it. Now you're standing in front of us, stopping us from doing our job. You kind of justified it. Another lady, another person uh, in the office, uh, we went up there and they called security on you. You don't get security called on you twice um, because uh, you're a nice person. You get security called on you because uh, you're abrasive and you're rude, okay? And so, you know, the old saying is that some guy walks into the, the barbershop and he says, oh, God damn it. I can't believe what's the deal with these people around here. Air, my, the guy at the service station, he's an asshole. Uh, the guy that uh, does my teeth, he's an asshole. The guy that parked next to you today, he's an asshole and everybody's a fucking asshole. What is going on with people? Barbara says, look in the mirror. If you think, if everybody's an asshole, the real asshole is you. You're having a problem with everybody, so um, you have a problem. You had a problem with everybody there that uh, didn't. Not everybody there. Everybody there that didn't go along with what you wanted. Everybody there. I remember listening to you talk on the phone and see. And so I'm getting a bird's eye view of everything about you. You. Uh, and so, hey, you know what? What? what give me the up. Give me the rundown of what's going on. What's that today? Talking to the nurse in the morning, the doctor in the morning. We're going to do this. We're going to do this, and uh, we're going to have to give him a, a CAT scan. What? No, you're not. I'm executive or on this on thing. And I can tell you what to do. And I am. No, we're going to have. Hey, you are not going to give it to us. We got to worry about what's downstream. As soon as somebody came along that didn't agree with you and go with your way, you got pissed. And you told them how it was and what's going on. You kind of got kicked out of the other place too, except for they weren't going to kick you out. They made you wait until they got the equipment at your thing. And then your best thinking ended up with you um, taking care of your kid 24 hours a day. And um, and so you used to say to me, "Oh my God, I wake up running." Uh, I woke up running. You know what? Uh, running on the flank. You always acted like. Uh, it, you were some special person doing some special job and I told you that there's millions of people all around the world doing the same thing uh, stress is stress um, if somebody has stress and working at a factory depending on how bad their stress is stress is stress it can be on anybody's head you have no more stress than anybody else in fact you choose you chose to do what you're doing right and so I you said I don't get any sleep I said I'll sleep out there for you and we can rotate 
No. So every time I tried, you had a problem, I got kind of fixed for it, but you didn't want to go along with it because you didn't want to take my, my, um, you didn't want to, to go along with me. Uh, somehow, um, Okay, I'm back. I had to take a thing. So, you know, I just looked and we're at 24 minutes. Um, um, so, 24 minutes and I guess I can talk 24 minutes in a year. Um, if I had it to do over, um, uh, I would have, uh, I would have stayed with Sandra. Um, I would have, uh, she was a person that, 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 that I liked talking to. I liked, uh, being around. Um, somehow I felt that, uh, um, um, I looked at it and, um, and so I would have been with the person that was loving and caring, um, and considerate and, and, um, all of those things. So I screwed up and, uh, and I, I should have stayed with Sandra and uh, had a good life. Uh, I thought I could do better than Sandra because Sandra was kind of overweight. Um, you know what? Somebody a little overweight that's nice, much better person than somebody that um, is, 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 is uh, you know, really in shape and into their body because that person's really into their body. They're into themselves. They're not into you. But so I screwed up there. And then if I had it to do over, um, I would have been with Sandra. But, um, so much, much, uh, much more well-rounded person. Um, uh, and it's not about, uh, it's really not about, it's really, but it's about who treats you, uh, good and treats you with respect. Sandra used to leave all kinds of notes for me. She used to buy stuff for me. Um, she used to plan stuff, go out with us. Um, she was always watch TV with me. She always liked to watch the same things I do. She would sit in the car and listen to, uh, uh, my music and her music was my music and she had playlist when I was in Illinois she went and got all of uh, a bunch of pictures off of different things about my family and made a big collage um, uh, Gabby on the other hand never bought me one thing she never did anything for me it was all about her um, so you know well so here I am I'm, uh, I had somebody that really loved me and I thought I could do better and I kicked them down the road and then I had somebody that I thought um, that I that I was infatuated with like Sandra was infatuated with me and just like uh, just like uh, I thought I could do better than Sandra you know, Gabby thought she could do better with me and the bottom line is, that I couldn't do better than Sandra. And the bottom line is, you couldn't do better than me. Um, there's nobody that, uh, that uh, like Sandra and like me, that cared more about you. And uh, as, as Eagles say, go with the Queen of Hearts. Don't go with the Queen of Diamonds, they'll hurt you if they're able. The Queen of Diamonds, somebody that wants other than you. The Queen of Diamonds wanted money, that would be like a gold digger chick, right? She'll fuck you over as soon as she gets a bigger, better deal. And uh, the same way with you. Um, I really think that, Gabby, you're confused. I really think that uh, when I met you, you had really, sh you, you said you had really short hair because you had short, short extensions. I think that you kind of go back and forth between wanting to, to be with women. And so you cut your hair, you got divorced, and I think you have that in you that you, you get settled on that. And then, but you go back because you, you don't think it's acceptable. You don't, you can't take, um, and, um, being around your son or your mother knowing or your family knowing that you really is what they thought the whole time you're bisexual or you're lesbian so I think that you can't take that so I say to you if that's the case I could be completely wrong but I say to you if that is the case then go down that road Okay, go down that road. Cut your hair short. Wear a man's watch. Uh, do a thing. Uh, pick that nurse up at the thing. Go out with her. You have to be who you have to be. Okay, you're holding back. Or if you like black people, if you you know what, go down that road. I feel that you're not content because you're you're afraid to really go what you're going for. There's a certain thing in, in life where if you like uh, a black people or something that's odd. 
or maybe you like fat people, whatever. Uh, if you know, it doesn't matter. Something that society says, oh, you know, what are you doing with that person? So you, you stay in the state and you try to conform to society and you're never really happy, you know? And so if you do, in fact, like women, it's your time. You've been married 27 years. You don't have anybody. Go out with them. So what about what your son says? So what about what your neighbors say? So what about what your uh, what your mother says? So what about those people? Be your own self. You have to free yourself and be what you want. You may go out with a woman for a year and decide, hey, you know what? Maybe you like guys. I don't know. Maybe you like black people. I don't know. But whatever you do, be yourself. Um, back to Sandra. Um, I am really, really sorry um, the way I treated you. Um, you are a tremendous person. You are very sweet. Uh, uh, Sandra got into the same thing that uh, I think that um, you, Sandra went out with a pilot and she talked to me and she says, I, I want to be with you, John, because uh, can you imagine her wanting to be with me in the way I treated her? Well, she did. Maybe it's because she couldn't seal the deal, right? Who knows? But uh, so she says she had this pilot, which is flying all over the world, got good respected job, makes tons of money. Um, but he was never home. Well, you know, so she didn't get to see him. Every point of refuge has its price, the Eagles say. You know, I will have to admit that uh, that I one of the one of the uh, so so she goes into this guy and she's you know she should have been like, well, this guy had more, you know, it's better, you know, and so but she didn't. She said, I don't love this guy the way I love you. Okay, well, you know, um, so she was put in the situation that you were in, Gabby. She was, you were with me, and you didn't love me the way that you should have loved me. Um, maybe the way you loved your fiance, um, you know, that you never could seal the deal with, and that's why you still love that guy. Keeping you're keeping him in that little shell 30 years ago when he had his little nice little sweater on at the J.C. Penney's place when you had the picture taken, but. Um, so if I had to do over, I would have stayed with Sandra. Uh, I would still have my house. I would be happy. And that was my mistake. Um, Sandra or uh, Gabby, um, I wasn't the person for you. Um, that's obvious. And I just don't know why you treated me so crappy. Um, you could have just uh, told me, you could have just left and said, I don't feel it, whatever. But you, you kept hanging in there, which made me think you really did love me, but you didn't. Nobody treats somebody that terribly um, when when they when they love somebody. You, you help them. I, you know, I gave you some solutions. I gave you everything. You just took one little thing. It was always about little things, and you just go crazy. And, oh, I don't want to end the fight. <laughs> that was another thing. Oh, hey, can we talk about this? Oh, my God, I don't want to talk. That is so weird. And like, hey, uh, you know, can uh, you, you just, you got so pissed off. Hey, uh, there's a self-help thing that Jordan Peterson's had. Do you know, do you know um, what I've done for 10 years? And no, I don't know, because you didn't tell me anything about your life. The only thing you told me is you had a fiance 10 years ago that's still on your fucking wall that you somehow revere. You have little pictures of him in, in your like Bible that you keep and look at it sometimes. I don't know whether you masturbate to them or whether you whether you think what could have been or but seriously, 30 years after how many relationships? And um, so, um, Gabby, I never, I don't, don't know what your situation was. I'm guess, I'm just guessing. Who knows? Maybe you're, you're not. Uh, you have a really strong sexual appetite. I mean, the first time that you met me, the very first day you met me, oh, we 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 had we had sex. Well, the very first time. I met Sandra, we did too. But um, so uh, anyway, um, I don't understand you. I don't know who you are. All I know is that the way I got treated and um, the way you treated me, um, I was, you know, standing, I was waiting at home for you, calling you up. What do you want, John? You're at the hospital. I didn't do anything yet. And so I'm like, oh, what did I do? And, and uh, I get home and I go to hug you. Every time Sandra and I... Um, Every time uh, I came, every time Sandra came home from work, I would walk out to the house, uh, out of the house with my socks on. She's getting out of the car. The dog would go out there. The dog would greet her. I would say hi and give her a hug and a kiss and welcome her home. She said she really liked that, you know, because she was the she was my girlfriend and and uh, 
you know, and uh, I she I liked her, and she was a nice person, and so I sat there all day, and my people that my friend that I liked, I have friend that did things for me, I have friend, so I went out and seen her because I was that that's what people do. When I tried doing it to you, you said, "Hey, leave me alone." First of all, you, you loaded yourself down with forty things that you don't even need to bring them in the house because you brought them right back out the next day. So I was like, "Why am I any? Don't touch me! Don't you need to see de 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 decompress?" So I said, "Okay." So I lay in the other room, and when you walk by, I said, "Hey, when you decompress, I'm here for whatever we want to do. We can get dinner." Oh, this is how you greet me, and so. Next time I acted like I was busy. So I wasn't like not paying attention and I wasn't greeting at the door. I was putting movies away. And it's like, and so you had a problem with that. So I didn't know how to, but the point is that you were just angry. You're just so angry at me all the fucking time. And, uh, and I didn't know why I got, tr I got treated like, like a fucking redheaded stepchild. It's the only way I can. And so anger built up, anger built up and anger built up. Um, we're at the, you know, and you're, going down the road and why are you with me why are you with me don't go to this gym then okay this is a good one too sandra and, and gabby you can listen to this she comes to me and she says hey i met this guy at the gym and he says uh um uh, some uh, muscle and fitness magazines giving away ten thousand dollars for for the thing what black people what black guys used to do and then in every industry if you're going to uh if you're doing modeling some guy, some usually black guys, because they're scammers. She goes, "Hey, you know what? Uh, there's a part coming up in this uh, Steven Spielberg movie. You might be able to get it in. I'm probably gonna need some taking pictures of. It. It's gonna be some. Oh, really? Really? And the, the dumb, the dumb people always sucked into that. Or hey, there's a, hey, there's a my my sister, uh, my my sister won won five thousand dollars last year in the muscle and fitness contest. It's a scam. Men talk to you because." They come up with reasons. Do you think some man's will actually walking around caring about you getting ten thousand dollars? It's just his way of talking to you. And if you're in the muscle industry, he talks about muscles. If you're in the the acting industry, he talks about acting. If you're in uh, something else, the golfing industry, he says, "Hey, uh, maybe I can get you in uh, this uh, tournament. Uh, you know, uh, why don't you come here and we'll take some pictures? You got to have some headshots." And uh, and so you 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 uh, you bought onto that. Another thing was when you were. Uh, when you were telling me about talking to your one friend, first of all, she walks in, she goes, you know what, I might be a lesbian uh, because I'm tired of this dude. I don't know why she's saying it to you, but you said, we are talking about Match.com and Plenty of Fish, and you said, well, there was this guy, I met this doctor um, on over overseas, and I didn't know if it was a scam or not. Well, I found out it was a scam, but I... Uh, I, I kept I kept it going for a couple uh, couple you know there, you said they're black Nigerian people I kept it going for a couple weeks just because I liked the, what he was saying to me that is fucking weird that is weird first of all anybody that's not intelligent enough in this day and age and you were 59 years old to know that some motherfucker calling you from Nigeria um, that probably you can you can Skype I went out with a Russian chick 10 years ago and I was Skyping her when she was in Omsk Russia okay so you find Found out you're like one of these people they call the catfish so stupid that they actually have this fallacy and everybody knows all you got to do is get on Skype or Zoom or anything you can see the person instantly but you were your ego I don't even know you you wanted to uh, believe that and everybody knows that you don't want to go out with the doctors doctors are first of all they're, they're working all the time secondly they're married to the job and thirdly they're the biggest fucking flirts in the goddamn world because they got a little ego and no one would want their fucking job they don't make very much money uh, they just don't unless you got a heart surgeon or something like that and he's glued to the fucking job or a plastic surgeon there's certain situations where where they got it made but most of them don't 90 percent of the fucking doctors are just worker motherfucking bees you know and they're not even they're, they're just shitheads you know and they walk around and do the same fucking thing every day talking to a bunch of sick people we're dealing with fucking the nurses and fucking the employee people that one guy that one doctor said oh you uh boy you're really in good shape anybody that tells you they're in good shape or makes a comment about he's a doctor going in there and do the fucking job anybody makes a comment he's flirting with you you know that everybody knows that you like it though stoked your ego but um anyway so what i'm doing right now i uh i gabby didn't love me the same way as sandra um i should have stayed with sandra i lost sandra now and um so what i'm gonna do is um kind of pick up the pieces um and uh get back on match.com uh try to find somebody um i love you sandra um you are a really good person i'm sorry i fucked that up gabby 
I never really knew you. Uh, there was an infatuation there because I never really could get your love. And everybody, like you know, maybe they say, "Well, you really you wanted all your you wanted your dad's uh, you know affection, or you, know, I get, I get, you wanted your dad you wanted to you never could get something, um, so you keep liking it." Like Gabby was. Uh, like 30 year old romance about the guy that was with her for a little bit of time and, uh, and he died and so she never really um, made that happen and so then she always longs for it and what could have been but um, I never really knew you uh, you're a uh, you're really self-centered uh, person you, uh, you you have a lot of secrets um, you are, aren't, aren't content in your, in your life um, and um, I would my best advice for you to be go you whatever you're doing I think that uh, I really think that you're uh, um, you want something that's a little taboo and you're afraid to go for it whether it be black people or or women or whatever and maybe you're maybe you're just got a little wild side on you and you've been with a girl before and uh, and you kind of you need that or you need the freedom of, of flirting and doing what you want I think when you I think it's so part of your DNA that when you go into the gym, you get your ego stroked by people walking up to you, and you like that. You like flirting. That's what I said before. I said the people that fuck shit up are people that have a certain amount of success, or certain pretty, and they've they've been on the hunt for so long. When they find what they want and they got what they wanted because they hunted and they got it, they can't shut it off. So then they're at the gym, um, like uh, the guy went on J Lo. He had J Lo, the Ben Affleck. He had um, what's her name? But their 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 egos are so big that they constantly need their egos fed and so once they have what they want they can't shut it off the next thing you're out the gym they're like hey uh, I'm Ben Affleck or I'm I'm uh, this guy from the New York Yankees and so he's always flirting with somebody because that's what he's done for so long he can't shut it off he can't be satisfied he can't say hey this is what I wanted I just got it now that's good it's almost be like a guy buying a million dollar house and he's always striving for the two million dollar house now you know the guy buying the Corvette and now he wants a Ferrari dude like in, in, in people just are always longing for the next best thing or never content and you are a person that's just not content and you're uh, cleaning your, your your little things that you do um, you're, you're, you're like uh, you're you know I don't know but uh, it's 41 minutes now and you probably quit listening to it long ago but I uh, went out with you for a period of time Sandra thank you for the experience I'm sorry I fucked up uh, Gabby, I went out with you and I laid everything on the line. I, I thought that I was, I thought that you were what I wanted, and and if you would have turned out to be a Sandra, then you would have been what I wanted. But you were Gabby, and Gabby doesn't know what she wants, <laughs> and so uh, and so you can't be with somebody who doesn't know what they want. So um, I uh, love and respect you both. I both I wish you both goodbye. It was like that one movie. Uh, uh, Matt Matthew McConaughey, uh, he was uh, you know uh, um, girlfriend's past. <laughs> he he broke up with. I'm gonna have to break up with these with you in bulk because you know it's uh, it's it's quicker because <laughs> he had three women talking to him on Zoom. She goes, you are you, you talking to somebody else? Are you talking to all three of us? He says, well, I'm gonna have to. I'm sorry about this, but I'm out of time. I'm gonna have to break up with you in bulk. <laughs> and so uh, and so that's kind of what I'm doing. But I, who knows? If you get to the end, you get a prize. But uh, Gabby, uh, you're, you have a lot of great qualities. Uh, I didn't know you. Uh, you don't know what you wanted. Um, you didn't want me, so I'm moving on from you. Uh, Sandra, uh, I think that I abused you and mind fucked you so much uh, that I think we've passed our prime there. And you don't deserve to be anybody that's fucked you over so much. So you have to move on. I have to move on. And so uh, either one of you girls, um, I'm. I'm you know, I don't hold resentment, so either one of you called me up, we could be friends. Sandra can't be friends because uh, she always wants more. Um, you can't be friends with somebody that you always kind of want uh, to be with them because then you're like, oh, you're getting jealous all the time. And I don't think that I could be friends with you either, Gabby, because I would always want to be um, um, more than friends. Although I kind of got to the point where um, I don't really like, um, unless you change, and that's... <laughs> Unless you changed, and where are we at now? Eight thirty. Okay. Uh, so I don't really think, but um, I don't really think I could be friends because I probably always wanted more. So I'm here now, 
and uh, thank you both for uh, for uh, you know sharing part of my life with me. Um, I don't have any resentments and regrets. I did the best I could, um, and um, see, see you guys later. Have a good life. Keep in touch if you want. I can do that, but I don't think either one of you want to. So anyway, all right. Love you both. Bye.